This is KGW News at Noon. We begin with breaking news this noon out of Southeast Portland, where a car fire ended with a police shooting a man. Hello, I'm Christine Pitawanich. This all happened near the intersection of Southeast 83rd Avenue and Harrison Street around 9 a.m., putting schools in the area into lockdown. Those have all been lifted after the chaos this morning. Our Mike Benner is on the scene, and Mike, you just recently wrapped up a press conference with police. Yeah, that's right, Christine. I can tell you that uh, the scene is secure and the situation resolved. But if I step out of the way, you'll notice a large police presence still out here at this hour. And that's because this investigation is just getting started. And uh, this is a police shooting at the end of the day. So they have to uh, really comb this entire area uh, for all sorts of evidence. Now, as uh, we show you some video that we shot earlier, I can tell you this all started uh, just before 9 o'clock this morning uh, police and fire dispatched to reports of a man setting a car on fire in the 2000 block of southeast 83rd that's right by southeast 82nd and harrison now we're told there was some sort of altercation and police um, ended up shooting the suspect we don't know how many officers uh, fired or how many uh, shots were fired we just know that police ended up shooting the suspect who did manage to get away. And we can tell you that CERT, uh, CNT, and uh, the EDU teams, these are tactical teams for the Portland Police Bureau, were, were called out to the scene and they found this man and they convinced him to surrender. And he was eventually taken to the hospital um, with uh, what are reported to be uh, gunshot wounds. Now, uh, this happened again just a block off of 82nd. People we spoke to concerned that this happened in such a populated area. Take a listen. Community school behind us and then bystanders and stuff. Just, you know, it's kind of it's kind of sad, but I hope they they negotiate fast because you never know what can happen. And you heard that woman mention a school just a block or two away is Harrison Park School. We understand that school went into lockdown. So, too, did PCC. Uh, but those uh, lockdowns have been lifted. Police telling us that uh, this person uh, involved in this situation, the suspect had nothing to do with those schools, that this just uh, happened uh, near them. Um, as far as uh, other details, we, we're hearing people here on scene. Uh, witnesses tell us that they heard that the uh, suspect might have had a gun, might have had a rifle. We're trying to confirm that with police. Uh, as soon as we get more information, we'll be sure to pass it along. But uh, Christine, I'll send it back to you. Okay. Our Mike Benner in Southeast Portland. Thank you, Mike. To another big story we're following ahead of election day tomorrow, candidates running for Oregon governor were very busy this weekend. Tina Kotek, Christine Drazen, and Betsy Johnson are all making their final push for votes. The latest polls have Kotek and Drazen still neck and neck, while Johnson continues to lag behind. Blair Best caught up with all three candidates to talk about what they hope to get across to last minute voters. This race for governor has been the most competitive Oregon has seen in recent history. All three candidates now taking these final days before the election to travel the state and meet with voters. From Salem to Portland, all three gubernatorial candidates give it their all in a final fight for votes just days before the election. We need change. We have got to fix what's going on in this state. This is democracy. This is how we win. And you are beautiful. Thank you. Democratic candidate Tina Kotek met with Planned Parenthood leaders and other supporters on the campaign trail Sunday in Northeast Portland to kick off a canvassing event. We got a couple more days, folks. Thank you for being here. She talked of reproductive freedom, protecting the environment, public education, and standing up for the working class. But I have been a change agent in the legislature, making sure we can help working families move forward here in our state. As governor, I'm going to work hard with everybody around the state to make sure people can be successful, stand up for working families, and make sure we have the state we all want to have. Meanwhile, Republican candidate Christine Drazen was in the state capitol, starting her tour of six stops, ending in Clackamas County on Monday. This election is our opportunity to turn our state around. She talked of this supporting police, safer communities, and fighting police. to repeal ballot measure 110. If elected, she would be we Oregon's first Republican governor since the 80s. 
we've come up short far too many times. Right. Not, this Not this time. If we're going to have better for the future of our state, if we are going to address the homeless crisis in our streets, have a more affordable community, and in fact have better, stronger schools, we can't choose more of the same. We have got to vote for change. Not holding an event today was unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson. Instead, she made the rounds at small businesses in the Portland metro. This after her tour of rural Oregon last week. We are caring way too much right now about who wins the horse race. Does the Democrat win? Does the Republican win? We ought to be focused on how are we going to govern. Over the past few weeks, support for Democratic candidate Tina Kotek has grown. That's according to an Emerson College poll released Friday. 44% of voters support Kotek and 40% back Drazen. Johnson lags behind with just 8% support. And I hope my candidacy and my presence in this election will at least change the dialogue to the point that we all recognize we got a problem and we got to deal with it and we've got to deal with it in an Oregon way, not in a Republican or a Democrat way. All have one final message for voters. Get out the vote. Vote, vote, Oh, we get those ballots in. All three candidates say it's up to voters at this point, and they're urging Oregonians to get out and vote. Ballots must be mailed or returned to an official drop box on or before 8 p.m. on Election Day. Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th. Blair Best, KGW News. So yes, the clock is ticking and we are all being bombarded with those political TV ads and flyers in the mail. All of that costs money and the amount spent this cycle is projected to break records. A study by a nonpartisan group says that spending this election cycle across the U.S. could be close to $17 billion. That would make it the most expensive midterms ever. And the U.S. Senate race in Washington is among the most expensive. Political newcomer Tiffany Smiley is going up against Democratic incumbent Patty Murray. Both candidates were out in Washington this weekend, making their final push for votes. Smiley is probably the biggest competitor to Murray since 2010. And this contest is drawing in major cash. Murray has raised more than $18 million, just a little more than Smiley, who's bringing in more than $16 million. Very significant. It may not be a record, but it has to be close to the record amount spent on a statewide campaign in Washington state. What we're seeing here is is the overall trend that isn't just about these two candidates, but it's about this election in general uh, and the fact that independents are breaking towards Republicans. Murray has shelled out nearly $21 million to Smiley's $15 million. That combined $35 million puts both in the top 25 spenders of candidates nationwide. So make sure you tune in to our election night streaming show tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. We'll have live results and analysis. Our reporters will be spread out all over the metro area covering the big races. You can watch it on KGW.com as well as on the KGW Plus app. Then we'll also have full election coverage on the news at 11. Some parts of the mid Willamette Valley and Clackamas County got some snow over the weekend. This is video from Sandy yesterday afternoon. So to clarify, only areas around a thousand feet or so got snow. The rest of us probably going to have to wait for a bit. While it was only a dusting, people were still excited. I'm really excited. Uh, like not even a month ago, there was like 80 degree weekends and now we're jumping straight into winter and I'm excited. Roads in Clackamas County clear now, but the wet and cold weather that we've had recently is a really good reminder to slow down behind the wheel on these rainy, snowy type days that we'll have now and into the future. If you ever want to get information on the weather, we have your most up to date forecast on our website and on the KGW app. But right now we've got the big cheese himself, meteorologist. In just a second, after we take a look outside, I almost forgot we have our Wells Fargo Skycam taking a look at a gray day above the Rose City, but still beautiful. It's the Pacific Northwest. What do you expect? Okay, back to our big cheese. Meteorologist Rod Hill himself here to give us the lowdown on this cold weather. Hey, Rod. I got the cheese yellow tie on today. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I tell you what, it is chilly out. That one gentleman talked about wasn't that long ago. We had 80s. We're now we're about as far below normal temperature wise as we were above back those first 20 days of October. The reason for the coldness today is this upper level. You can see it spinning 
offshore. So far today, I've been a little surprised at how few showers have actually made it over the coast range. We've had some light rain. We have some light rain right now up and down the Portland metro area. A little bit of light rain passing in Salem. We're still seeing snow generally at this hour above 1500 feet in the coast range, but hasn't been the explosive shower activity that could still change. This hasn't been yet at 1210 in the afternoon. Here's a reminder that the high country has seen snow. This is 1400 feet up in the coast range, 35 degrees on the highway, which is just wet, but plenty of snow alongside the road and still below freezing up at government camp at 31 degrees with snow and ice over highway 26. That looks wet. This is the camera down in Oregon City at the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center raindrops there. We're only at 44. We'll see steady temperatures in the mid 40s the rest of today. I'll be surprised if showers don't pick up and get heavier, but can't guarantee it. The rain chance will be ending tomorrow and that sets up talk of freezing temps. That's ahead of my seven day. Ooh, chilly. Okay. Thanks, Rod.